it's not much, but it's a start. The Prime Minister, well, the former Prime Minister of Iceland, Gate Harding, he was charged and brought to court in 2012. And we watched the political and bank elite appear in court just to hear something we already expected. A group of totally incompetent and seriously corrupt people their defense in court is best described with their own words. I did not know. I did not see it. I did not understand it. I did not want it. I did not do it. I wasn't there. They lost their memory. Gerharde was found guilty of failing to keep ministers properly informed about the 2008 crisis, but was acquitted on more serious charges that could have resulted in prison sentence. We have proofs that the politicians knew this almost a year before it started the crush. Each and every one of these people failed in their jobs. They did not do anything to prevent the Icelandic bank crush, but they could have if they had been as clever as they claimed to be. The Parliament made new law 2010 called paragraph 45 to prevent or minimize corruption in appointing judges in the court. We had seen in the past years how close friends, relatives, and party members became powerful judges without having the qualification. The crash was a complicated affair. We still don't know exactly what happened, where the money went, who owned what, and who was making the decisions. But we are working on it. The Icelandic banks use complex ownership and cooperate structures to hide their doings. There's a lot of confusion in I Iceland, and only one word explains that. Politics. One thing we have learned already, and that is we all have to be, we need to be vigilant and guardians of our own society. We started with the Qatari revolution and we have a long way to go. The line between sanity and insanity is very thin. When Hitler was elected in 1933, Germany was a democratic state. Germany had fair elections. Each and every one of us has the duty to be vigilant. It is a work that does not concede holidays or breaks. Protesting is a way of being vigilant. It must be about sharing and caring for each and every one of us, not just the few. The disparity of wealth in the world today should not come as a surprise to people. Is it not obvious that the massive increase in inequality inequality and poverty is not just a system error but also a tool of extortion that knowingly is maintained by a special interest forces that will stop at nothing to maintain the system in this form. It is quite clear that this oppression will not be removed by conventional politicians in line with the suggestions and advice of scholars after careful media coverage. 
It is entirely the responsibility of the public to expose the fraud and take the initiative to merge this monster. My friend, this is the first time in the human history that we, the people, can unite in a way we have never been able to do before through the internet. And we must, by all means, protect it. Corruption is a part of human nature and a strong trait in our culture. But in recent years, we have seen it rising to heights as never before, and it has got out of control, and we must fight it. Fight it together. And we have started, and we are getting stronger every day. So let's organize, connect, stand, and act together, share, and care. Has anything changed in Iceland after the Cutlery Re Revolution? The answer is yes. The key word is awareness. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. If, if there are any questions, I'm afraid the microphone is down here. You're either going to have to speak up or, or come down and ask the question. I think that's all to the back. If so turn that way, uh, Orville. If you are a Wellington next week, we'd like to invite you to come down in front of our parliament to the small piece of land, Waikiki land, and you'll be aware that there's a very strong movement in this country that has been exercised. We're only a small group. We get out of parliament. Thank you. Unfortunately, um, he's going to be in Christchurch and Dunedin next week, but um, he'll be there in thought, I'm sure. Come back to win the race. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they are giving us a lot, but not all we need. There are only four people. We have 63 parliament members. But they have informed us a lot about a lot of things happening. And I'd like to tell you about one thing. Uh, uh, a friend of mine, her name is Birgitta Jungstofis. She has, if you ever heard about WikiLeaks, have you? Yeah. They were operating in the beginning in Iceland. And Birgitta has passed a bill through the parliament. She managed to do that and it tells you what kind of a parliament we have because they didn't understand what they were accepting. <laughs> she got through something she calls in me. I am an I. Uh, uh, ba, 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 ba. It's international media something. She, she got this through the parliament, and today they are waking up. What did we do? <laughs> But 
I am an I is called the Icelandic Modern Media Initiative. Dot com. I am an I. What is it? This is a safe haven for investigative journalists, activists, whistleblowers around the world. If you have information the government is trying to hide, or the army, or whoever, then you can send it to India, and they will protect you by law. If you've heard about Bradley Manning, for example, if he had, had if we had uh, in me, then he wouldn't be in prison. What he did was to most, of peop most people a very beautiful thing. He showed us behind the curtains how the war is run. It's disgusting, in one word. But in me is there, so that's one of the things the four people did. And that's enough for a while. It's a lot to me. when they came home. They built all our natural assets, our roadways, our dams, all these things that would be part of peace. Seventy years later, the memory has been forgotten, and now we are selling what was earned. And the Crucible of War should have value in peacetime. Thank you for helping to remind us. I'm sure everyone here has an ancestor or someone who went to war. And I'm sure if those generations were sitting here right now, they would not be in spiritual form approving what's happening in our country. So thank you from them. From them, because they are here. When our photos are here, as if the spirit form is walking with us. So thank you for bringing your wisdom from the north wind underneath our southern sky, under the southern cross, part of the Pacific Ocean, where we must follow the path of peace but still have the age of the Nordic warrior. Thank you. Sorry, I might not be able to yell loudly enough. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I have a discussion with friends about you, and we were talking about how we can du duplicate your experience here, and uh, I think too negatively, he said to me, he said, well, firstly, this is a multicultural society. It's very different from your homogenous sort of society population, the mixture population. And secondly, in your country, the collapse happens almost like overnight. And uh, when you guys were used to be very rich, seen as a very rich people. And in this country, we feel like we were being cooked, like those frogs being cooked in a pot slowly. A lot of people don't even know, don't even know it's going to happen, uh, the collapse, like you said, systematically, our money is going taken out, the whole country gets poorer and poorer. And uh, my question is, what do you see as our advantage or opportunity? Because we, from against SSL, we actually are the first we have been working for nine months. At first, we got first big match. We got over uh, between five and eight thousand people on the street. But our prime minister just uh, basically say, "Who and what?" Uh, totally ignore it. And after that, we found really, really hard to mobilize people to get people on the street because they've given up hope. They just say, "Well, government will never listen. We are wasting all the energy." And the uh, people 
say they need to work. I wonder what happened to your... Uh, how do you get people to not to work, <laughs> to get on the street? <laughs> yeah. I got many questions, but this basically is my major question. Yes, this is the same problem everywhere in the world. How do we get people on the street? I usually say to people, look, if you want to move a graveyard, don't expect the inhabitants to help you. <laughs> Believe me, doing things like this, protesting, be lively. You, this is what I was saying about reason and creativity, it works perfectly. Get the artists to write poems, write songs, do plays, do something funny on the street, entertain people. Bring the message over. Being cooked as a frog is not very nice, is it? <laughs> Perhaps you people are. I don't know. We were in a way. But it wasn't uh, like in, in Iceland we say today if someone is like superficial or something dishonest, we say, how very 2007. <laughs> Our society had become a very strange society. It was the society of people competing with each other. How is your car? Have you... Come and see my new car. Have you bought a house? Ah, nothing compared to my house. If you met people on the street, they were not saying, hello, how are you? They were saying, oh, hi, where did you get that fur? And they were talking about everything that could bought, be bought for money. This is all gone. Today, we are seeing people relaxing. We are seeing statistics telling us children they are doing fine today. Why? Because the parents have time to look after them. They didn't have time for that before. Doing, like you have seen here pictures from the revolution, doing this takes time. But you have to be very persistent. And you have to be creative. Use artists. Use reason. But be persistent. This is what I've been trying to teach people. This is my experience anyway. Repeat things systematically. It will take time. On January the 19th, I started a protest in Iceland to remind the parliament to tell them, listen to us. We had a referendum on our new constitution on October the 20th, and 68% of the voters said, yes, we want a new constitution. But the parliament members, like they do, they try to forget about it. On 19th of January, I started a protest. I wrote to all the people, all the organizations, political parties, and so on in Iceland, saying to them, look, I am going to New Zealand. It's on the other side of the globe. I am not going to be able to do these protests for a long time. You will have to take over. There, like 10 days ago or something, the I became we again. I am in contact with them 
and they are doing fine.